In this episode of the RV Small Talk Podcast, we're going to dive right into the thick of it. The thick of the most basic of RV questions when someone's starting out in this field. What is the difference between the so-called, air quotes, stick and tin trailers and these vacuum bonded aluminum frame trailers? What's the difference? They look different. One looks cool old school. One looks cool modern and high tech. But what's the difference? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the RV Small Talk Podcast, where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and adventures that go right along with them. We are your hosts from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. I'm PJ. And I'm ready for the weekend. Welcome, ready for the weekend. We'll call her Lindsay. Don't forget that you can check out every episode we've ever uploaded to the interwebs over at rvsmalltalk.com. That's where you can find previous episodes, but also the show notes. So head on over there. If you'd like to know about what's going on in our community, I wonder if Lindsay knows where to go. If you want to join the conversation, you can head over to Facebook. We have our RV Small Talk community Facebook group. There you can ask questions, share your camping stories. We want to see pictures, all the good stuff. So on Facebook, search for RV Small Talk community. Absolutely. If you ever want to camp with us, did you know that we host rallies? I knew that. I knew did that. You know? PJ, have you been to one? I have been to all of them, every the, single one of them. Huh. They also have a Facebook page where you can hang out and talk, ask questions at the Texas Tiny Trailer Rally Group or the Texas Truck Camper Rally Group. Hmm. And find out when those rallies are and join up with us. It's about time you show up. Let's go. PJ, you've been in the RV game for a little while. And you've seen every type of- Are you of calling me old? I did not use those words. You didn't use those words. <laughs> I, heard those, I heard those words. I, I, I thought I heard. I heard it. I was just checking. But you have seen some great changes throughout the years on the way they build trailers, truck campers, and whatnot. And the biggest visual cue that people have when they're first starting to look at trailers in particular is the siding. You have this old school kind of I don't know, corrugated, it's a wavy aluminum and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. And we have a affectionate, endearing term for that. What do we call that? We call it stick and tin. Why? Well, because that's how it's built. They take wood frames and they're sometimes smaller, sometimes more substantial, but it can be a one by two that frames up the side. Then you staple the aluminum on the outside and uh, insulate it put some paneling on the inside. Uh -huh. The cabinets will keep the walls stable mm -hmm. and you've got a lightweight, reasonably lightweight, um, inexpensive camper. Okay. There is, and, and I will go up against anybody who bashes this type of camper. Okay. They are inexpensive to build. They are probably not considered top quality, but you know what? They are a Fabulous entry level sure, trailer. Sure. And they get people into the market that might otherwise not be able to do it financially. Okay. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. We have the same thing in the housing market. We have the same thing in cars. Right. Uh, I feel like she's just, like strongly defending something that I we am. did not say was bad. Yeah, you know what? She's <laughs> no, strongly but defending, we, but I also feel I, like that, she's like covered true. like eight yeah. of the six bullet points I had. I know. <laughs> as, she, as she was talking, I was like, oh, all right, back up. You said she'd have a, like this would be a softball episode for her. And I mean, well, she's, she's over got here like plenty to say about running it. the bases. <laughs> well, you know, we don't need to like go into depth about what aluminum is, but this is. What a, is aluminum? That's literally what. <laughs> this podcast is about what do you mean we don't have to go into I thought it. we were talking about building trailers I need metallurgy <laughs> <laughs> well then I need help because I have not been in that business for very long okay so so there's that let's we'll dive a little bit more into the stick and tin and maybe some history of it and and pros and cons and all that but before we do let's let's contrast with probably the second most common maybe now the most common type of build that you'll see out there and trailer land rv land which is this vacuum bonded walls like well, the smooth ones the, yeah right the, yeah well but let's yeah. let's back it up here because just because beep, there's beep, yep, beep, there you go put beep. it in reverse okay 
That doesn't necessarily mean vacuum bonded or laminated, which is the term I think you're searching for if it's fiberglass on the outside. So that is a whole nother category by itself. Okay. It is considered a stronger exterior. It has pluses and Wait, minuses. Okay, not now. Which, if you're, if, if we're dividing the vacuum bonded and the laminated, which one, <laughs> which one are you talking about well, right now? Which one are we, you describing? Well, we'll have to discuss what that means because okay. they both will have a fiberglass exterior. Do you remember when we thought it would be fun to not tell PJ what the topic is? Oh no, I think it's still fun. I think th- I think this is going this is going to be actually super great. Okay. Well, you know what? That is a common misconception. Yeah. That a lot of people have. See, I made it. That yes. Laminated and vacuum bonded are the same thing. Well, and that if it's the smooth fiberglass on the outside, it has to be one of those things. And okay. it doesn't. Okay. So. So if it's got the smooth fiberglass on the outside, other than say uh, one of the Oliver trailers or something like that, that's obviously just a solid piece of fiberglass hole, right? Well, that is a molded fiberglass. A molded fiberglass. So that is a whole different animal. And I didn't think that we were going to talk about that very much. So Well, it's just a different style of trailer. Say, and then you have just a standard laminate, which is just layers epoxied or glued together. Maybe pressed a little bit? Yeah, maybe. Uh, we're getting kind of confused in the weeds here. Well, th- that's why I'm trying to okay. deconfuse it. So, is that a word? It's not a word. It's a word. I use yeah, it. Yeah. Unconfused. unconfused. That's the word you're looking for. Unconfused? Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't think that's not Clearly. a real word. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a word. Can't be a word. <laughs> Misconfused. Reconfused. <laughs> so. Are we talking about what material is used on the outside or 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 mm. are we trying to discuss how the wall is yes, put together? That second one. That's what you want. Let's run with that one. All right. Yeah. Which I mean, hey, in, guys, in, we don't know what this podcast is about, but we'll tell you in just a minute. It's going to be good. The fun. Different, in there. OK, like the the main what three ways that trailers are like the walls are put together that you see in the market today. And of course that's going to have to do with the materials that they use, right. but we're talking about like how they, how they put the walls together. Yeah, if you're not watching this video, I'm just slowly her hands smushing my hands together. Cause yes. that's how they do it in the RV industry. <laughs> that's slowly that's the squishing. Te- the they technical just, hand signal, but they yes. have to make this sound. <laughs> um, um, yes. This trailer was made with hand um, smooshing. The, the better the, um, the less the delamination. Okay. <laughs> oh, so yeah. we start with stick and tin, right? The, the wooden frame and the, yeah. And the aluminum on the outside of it, usually bumpy aluminum. Because. Okay, wait, 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 come on, oh. guys. Bumpy aluminum. Yes. Wavy. It's crimped aluminum. It's like ruffles. They bumpy. have ridges. Bumpy. It, they do have ridges, like ruffles. Like if you were to fall down a big piece of it, it'd be like this. It's washboard. That's Sorry. how you, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's. Okay, so when you I should started. should just call it aluminum. Uh, <laughs> 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 so much vibrato in this wall. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay, okay, back on track. Do you know when I started, which was 25 years ago? No, I didn't say it, you said it. I know. <laughs> it's okay. it's Did you ride was, a horse to school? I, you know, I walked 15 miles in the snow barefoot. Uh, you lived in Houston. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's true. Yeah, 15 miles uphill in the swamp. That's right. Crossed the bayou. Uh, So at any rate, when I started, aluminum was what we did. That's what Princess Craft did. We built camper shells and we built um, like rodeo campers, truck campers. And they were all aluminum and they were wood framed. We built a wood frame just like a house. And then we stapled aluminum to sure. it. And, and then you went on the inside and added maybe insulation and then wallboard on the inside? And that is that is how we became a business. Okay. That is the business that I purchased 25 years ago. It was a bit outdated at the time, but it was still a very standard way of manufacturing. Um, if you want however, something that looks like, that's a modern build that looks like what Princess Craft used to build, I'd look at the Capri Truck Capri campers? does a great job. It's a beautiful camper. Yes, but yes. But it's, it's in that vein of the rodeo campers. And they were our competition at the time. It was Princess Craft and Capri. Would you say they won? 
Um, I would say they won with longevity. <laughs> I think they did. <laughs> I, I started in this business and I was like, oh, heck no, not going there. That's hard. Um, yeah. But we had these huge, like, like um, sample things of like 25, 30 different kinds of crimps on the aluminum. And the trailers that we would repair, because people knew we did this, sure. so they would bring us trailers to repair. It was all the same type of thing. Right. Um, but the alu- there were so many different types of aluminum, and there was different kinds of- Like the diamond shape? Oh, there was diamonds. Yeah. There was how many crimps. Some of them had like three crimps in, and then two crimps out, three crimps in, and- And you you could do that kind of crimping in-house? We couldn't do any of it, but we did have a giant metal break. Right. If you remember, we just got rid of it a few years ago right? um, because we used it from time to time. But we used it to help the ends of it fit, you know, do what we needed to do with it. So you would buy large sheets of this stuff? No. No? You would buy it from an aluminum manufacturer. So you wouldn't buy it in large sheets, but you would buy it in large sheets. I would buy it in long, skinny things because it was like siding on a house. Oh, it yeah, came yeah, yeah. like long boards, like exterior boards. Uh, yeah, and guys. it still does. Okay, what? So anyway, my point was, <laughs> guys. there was so many different kinds of crimping yeah. back then. Yeah, and you know Man, this that takes gave me right back to the eighties when that my gave sister the trailers. Her yeah, kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it made different kinds of looks. Yeah. On trailers and different kind of locks. So you had to know if it was an S lock or, you know, because they hook together and then you staple the bottom. They hook together. Yeah. You staple the bottom. It's OK. How you put it on. So similar to, to putting shingles on a roof or maybe putting the the wood, the pre-manufactured wood flooring. Same in. thing. You just put up a panel, then yeah. you staple all these things to it. Okay. So today, if you have to change aluminum on these things, you can pull off two of those and then you have to get up to the broken one and then you start hooking them on, right. stapling them, hooking them on, stapling them. And y'all kept Alcoa in yeah. business. Well, there's suppliers for that. But anyway, the inside could be uh, rolled pink insulation like you'd put in a house. Okay. Or you could put block foam in there uh-huh. and just cut it to fit, stick it in between the joists. Then you get wall paneling of uh-huh. whatever color you like and you staple it to the inside of the wood. This is straight and up. that's that. Almost it, smaller scale. It's kind of like when I was growing up, I'd build plastic models all the time. It's kind of like building a little model of a house. Yes. <laughs> you know, you're that's using That's exactly what it it's, is. It's residential building of the time. Just smaller it, with you said smaller um, wood supports instead of two by fours. You're using like one by twos. What? You can go as small as that on some of them. OK. Yeah. Two by fours aren't standard, you know. Sure. But but whatever framing you yeah. use, the aluminum goes on the outside on top of a, mm-hmm. a thin layer of paneling. And then you put wallboard on the inside. You've got a trailer. OK, right? so t- t- tell me what the pros are. If someone's going to get something built the stick and tin method today why would it make sense for them to you know they do have options it's cheap there you go okay <laughs> those are usually the the easy to find cheap it's trailers. cheaper cuz it's easier and faster to build so and it's very inexpensive materials okay so well wood's kind of expensive now but it's still in the grand scheme of things right okay are you going to be okay you're not going to be okay. She's not going to be okay. <coughs> we all know how this ends. Well, she's coughing. I'm yawning. All right. Hi, coughing. Hi, yawning. <laughs> no, I told you I'm ready for the weekend. <laughs> I am ready for the weekend. I understand. So, so there is also a way to uh, change the insulation, change it up, put some different boards behind it. So there mm. is a little bit of a difference. But stick and tin is a fine way to build and it makes it affordable now you can do the same type of build with fiberglass on the outside and if you have a frame and you want to put fiberglass on the outside you can do what they call a hung wall okay um so it's still wood framed corner to corner top to bottom it can be wood framed or it can be aluminum framed okay okay so so tell me the methodology of hanging a wall well uh, fiberglass has got a backing on it that's usually a, a luon, which is a real thin plywood. And then you just glue that to the frame. Okay. You put glue on the frame and you stick it down and you press it, let it dry. It sounds and like you've a, got holiday a, pro- uh, a holiday weekend project. Yeah. So it's a hung wall. 
Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what would the benefits of doing that? Because the only difference you've told me so far between that and a stick and tin is you've hung a fiberglass wall on the outside. Well, it takes less equipment for one thing. But okay. you, because you don't need a laminator or a vacuum bonded machine or a pinch roller, any of this equipment to smash the wall together and and laminate it, all you have is just a frame, glue, and something to press down on it so to keep it together. So how thick is this layer? If it's if it's not one of those laminated or vacuum bonded systems, it's just a hung fiberglass. Well, how thick is that fiberglass? It's very thin. It's thin enough that you can roll it. Okay. You can roll it into a tube to ship it. Okay. And then you spray it and you put Luon on the back of it. Okay. Now, it, that is a wood product. And these days, you can also put Asdel on the back. That is another selling point for a lot of campers, sure. right? Sure. Now, you guys know what Asdel is, right? Have I completely failed? No, because I've I've recorded a lot of your videos. <laughs> yeah. Asdel is a different material that you use in place of wood. Mm-hmm. Very often these days, uh, to make a camper less, um, less uh, vulnerable to moisture or delamination or that wood swelling or anything, right, right. you can use Asdel, which is basically a thin board that's plastic. It's a composite. Okay. It is like PVC. Okay. So you could stick it in a glass of water and it's not going to swell or anything. Okay. So if they use that as a backing, then they put the fiberglass roll on that and they can put that on the wall. Either glue it or laminate it. Sounds swell. All right. So we got the two thinner types of wall materials that you can put onto a wood framing system Mm -hmm. and then you have you can use batting or you can use the the closed self block foam okay what's the next step from there the the next level up if you will i don't know if these are levels up these are just options the next option from there yeah well what you were talking about you had a bunch of different names but basically people will call them laminated okay laminated walls we'll call the family of laminated yeah, there's the lamb fam. Some, <laughs> the lamb fam. So, if you laminate a piece of paper, you put plastic on both sides, and you run it through this machine that heats it up and kind of meshes that plastic uh-huh. onto the paper. Uh-huh. Right? Same kind of process. Um, there is a machine that heats up, yeah, and it runs these things through and presses down, yeah, and makes that wall one piece. Because the glue in it presses everything together. Sure. Okay. How many layers do you usually find? Uh, outside layer, a, f- a foam layer, and an inside layer, and that's pretty much normal, and then you can go from there? Yes, it's really the same as you would find you know, in any other wall that maybe isn't laminated. You've got the fiberglass on the outside, a layer of either Asdel or Luon, mm-hmm. the frame, some type of insulation, most likely block foam in there. And then on the inside, you can either have Asdel paneling or a wood paneling. Okay. And once that's layered together, then you run it through the laminator. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it. And it heats it up, presses it together. Sure. And it's all one piece. I think there needs to be a Marvel superhero. The laminator? Yeah. And his main foe is the delaminator. D Lamb back again. <sighs> we Foiled <used> to, again. <laughs> <laughs> we used to hear a lot about vacuum bonding. It, yeah, and it's, so a, let's go there. it's a bit different. And from what I understand, you know, it's just like it sounds like it, it sucks all the air out and pieces it together and heats it up and it's one piece. Okay. So, you know, the object of the game is to make a good solid wall that's not going to delaminate. It's going to add structural strength sure. to the trailer. Now, a lot of these trailers that we get, uh, you mentioned that the interior components actually make the structure more rigid or more viable for traveling and all that. Like you said, the cabinetry kind of stiffens it up. There are some of them that really need that cabinetry to keep it square and keep everything tied together. Okay. But when you get to a nicer laminated trailer, the cabinetry is put in afterwards and that structure is very strong. Sure. Because the next step up that people will try to sell you is 
aluminum frame. That has been the buzzword for probably mm, 10 years. It's actually came the out. vast majority of anything I've ever seen on our sales lot in the past five years. Yeah. Most yeah, of our stuff. Absolutely. Is that a humble brag? No, it's just what, since I've only been here for that long, before that I was, what, a middle school teacher? It's all I've really known to be talked mm-hmm. about here. I just don't know. I know. I don't know better. It used to be huge <laughs> bragging rights. And now it's very common. What you don't know is how thick the aluminum is, whether it's all aluminum frame. What? Whether it's just aluminum frame on the very outside with wood framing around the Would windows. Would that be called an or, aluminum framed superstructure? Correct. Aha. Uh-huh. And sometimes super you will structure. see superstructure. Yeah. So we're back to the superheroes. Laminator. Delaminator. This all sounds very, uh, I don't know. Hold it together. Su- superhero <laughs> stuff. We ought, to, we ought to create our own game. It's pretty epic. Yeah. Okay, so. <gasps> Make a movie. I don't have time for that. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Write a script. That sounds really hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so uh, there's different movie. levels of this term aluminum frame. Do you have the superstructure, which is really kind of like more like the picture frame, which is all around the outside and the inside rungs, if you will, studs, mm-hmm. would be more the standard wood. Okay, what's the uh, what's the point in doing it that way? I don't know. It's less expensive, maybe. Okay, you can a little still, more flexible. Okay, you can still say that there's some weight savings and some added rigidity in the aluminum. It's just a combination of two methodologies. You know, don't you don't you think sometimes the manufacturers are just looking? And this is a terrible thing to say, but don't you think sometimes? Pull the microphone closer while you yeah, say this. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting myself in <laughs> hot water. Yeah, sorry guys, I don't mean this quite as ugly, but they're looking for the list of things that they can put on the back of their brochure right. that says, "Look, we have all these things." Right. So when they, so some of them will say aluminum framed, and they'll have a little asterisk, and then it'll be like a little thing. Referring to the superstructure. Yeah. Like and that. what does superstructure actually mean? Well, and it's some like is, a structure, but it's super. I mean, I think we did a podcast one time on mm-hmm. buzzwords. I'm yeah. ready to do that again because the buzzwords we see now they are change. just overwhelming. But the reality is you do this aluminum frame. You don't know how thick the aluminum is. Mm-hmm. You don't know how it's attached. Is it welded together? Is it stapled together? Some of it's screwed together. Right, right. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying good or bad on any of that, but then some of them put wood on the inside. On the inside of the uh, Of the square tubing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it's jacketed wood, basically. Exactly. Okay. Because they say it protects the wood so the wood doesn't swell. It also keeps the condensation from coming in towards the aluminum. Um, It adds strength. I mean, I don't know. There's all kinds of ways There's to spin this. There's so different ways <laughs> to make aluminum frame be aluminum yeah. frame. Now, my thing with aluminum is that in some ways it's easier to work with and it's strong and it's lightweight. But I've also, at my understanding, because I'm, mm-hmm. I didn't spend that much time in shop class, is that it is actually pretty difficult to weld well, to do a good job. And as you get into not just well uh, super structures that are aluminum, but welded, fully welded cage frames and all that, that tend to be in the upper echelon. Mm-hmm. Is that where the cost starts to go because of the time and the skill needed to put those fully welded cage frame sort of things together? Well, yeah, that's going to add not only a little more complexity to it, right. um, but a different a different type of build because. How do you laminate a wall if you build a fully aluminum cage frame like Intech does? Mm-hmm. How do you laminate a wall? And the answer is you don't. All right. So there. So what's their solution? So they have a hung wall. Okay. So, so they're reaching across a lot of generations of techniques to right. put their modern product together. That's right. Okay. That's right. So they've got the solid cage frame that really adds stiffness to the trailer so nothing's wobbling around you can do lots of great things with that because you've got a really solid structure okay but then they have to attach the fiberglass on the outside so occasionally you do get a little bit of wave in it because there's no way not to 
Well, I think if you're hanging your wall, you're kind of, I mean, I hang flags. I typically have a little wave in them. Well, flags, but I don't think you think a flag is going to be the side of your trailer. Come on. I mean, I might need a flag wall <laughs> in a pinch. I guess that's true. But anyway, it's a different way to build. But they don't need anything to help hold up their cabinets on the inside. I mean, those trailers are so solidly built. You mm -hmm. just attach them mm -hmm. wherever you need to attach them. If it's aluminum frame. Yeah. It still has a steel chassis. Okay, I have another question then. <laughs> when you match two types of metal together, that invites corrosion, doesn't it? Oh, well, you're bringing me to the metallurgy side of it. Oh, yeah, and I wasn't supposed to go there. However... Well, you certainly can, yeah. except for the aluminum is in the walls. So it's not, it's not necessarily you know, spending a lot of time connecting well, it depends. to the steel if frame. If it's uh, the intake trailers, which are fully welded aluminum frames and frame, including the under frame and the A frame, then you still have to attach to the steel axle. That's true. Right? And the hitch components. And if you have a weight distribution hitch, that's steel and it's made it right there. So um, do you know of what they're doing to keep corrosion? You know, that is a really good question for them. Okay. Um, and I don't think I can answer that accurately. I mean, they figured it out. I, they figured something out, yeah. yeah. I'm told they have a coating that they use on it to keep any corrosion from happening. Okay. But but what that is and how it's applied, I don't know. Sure, sure. Don't know. I'll tell you everything I know, but I don't know that. Well, don't make anything up. They'll no. catch you on this podcast. I know. <laughs> but, yeah, so... I don't know. I think you've made some good points between all the different builds of a trailer and they use the aluminum chassis. Okay. But that's very, very rare. Okay. So, so if I were to, if I were brand new, I just want something for my family to go out, just dip my toes in the water and I don't have the greatest of means and I'm looking to do state parks kind of thing. Should I really focus maybe on the stick and tin side of things? I mean, is that going to be my playground when I'm shopping? I think you need to compare. Okay. I have seen now, especially since the pandemic, that a lot of the stick and tin are about the same price as the laminated ones. And if the price is close, by all means, step up. Okay. Step up, meaning... Step up. Just... To the fiberglass outside. To the fiberglass outside. That's the next step. Because, yes, I think, you know, you if you get a hailstorm, uh -huh. your aluminum trailer is going to have all kinds of dents in it. Uh -huh. uh, it's more susceptible to tree branches, all of those kinds of things. It is more susceptible to leaks. Um, sure. It is also less expensive. Okay. So, if it's not less expensive... Up for the fiberglass, right? Here, here's my question: What if? What about repairs? If something happens to that aluminum wall or that fiberglass wall, what's the difference in repairing those? It's a different kind of repair. Okay, is it more expensive typically to do fiberglass repair? It depends on what it is. Not necessarily. Okay, you know that's funny because he wrote on here it is more expensive. That is a selling point that people that sell stick and tin. Uh huh. Say, yeah, that fiberglass is more expensive. Undercover salesperson. Well, I, it was been my understanding, mm -hmm. you know, and, I, and if my understanding's wrong, then let's correct it. Okay, so it may or may not be more expensive. Let's say it's the same hail ball. It, it hits, <laughs> happens to hit the trailer. <laughs> it's a hail dent. It's hail damage. One, one nice golf ball size. One yeah. nice golf ball size hail dent, uh -huh. probably cheaper to fix in fiberglass because they just fix that one dent, paint it to match, uh -huh. you're good to go. Huh. Not expected. However, if you scrape a tree all the way down the side, yeah. you have a huge fiberglass repair and it's probably cheaper to replace the aluminum on the side because of the trailer. Because you can buy another sheet of it? And than just... to repair a, a big... Okay. Uh, fiberglass issue and okay. you know it used to be that the people uh doing replacing aluminum they were easier to find now you have to wait on the specific aluminum to arrive you have to order it from the manufacturer right so it's just time is it going to match um the fiberglass 
there are people who are good at fiberglass, not in every service department, sure. but they're out there. They're out there. Yeah, they we repair boats here. and all sure. kinds of things. Yeah, we have people work with us. So I wouldn't be scared of that. Honestly, I would not be scared of that. My guess also is that the aluminum is better from a insulate or is worse from an insulation standpoint than the fiberglass. Absolutely. Am I correct on that? Absolutely. So there's more seams, right? I mean, a lot more seams. That seems to be well, the case. Oh, <laughs> And there is also, you know, it's metal. So metal is going to hold the heat or the cold. So it's much harder to insulate the trailer. Well, isn't the metal more of a conductor than than fiberglass, which is more of an insulator? That's what I, that's what I mean. <laughs> the metal is the metal is going to itself become hot or cold. Okay. So your wall becomes hot or cold. So whatever the outside temperature is radiates it, inside. Ra- exactly. Thank you. Okay. Your English is much better than mine today. I don't know about Englishing. <laughs> okay, so. If I were to be someone who's more of a DIY person, mm-hmm. and I'm looking in the used market, but there's enough used of both types out there, mm-hmm. what would you recommend someone who actually enjoys working on their stuff? DIY, aluminum, or fiberglass? Doesn't matter. You know, obviously fiberglass because of the longevity. Okay. I think there is the possibility of a, a longer, healthier life mm-hmm. with fiberglass. Although, you know, we've seen aluminum trailers that were 10 years old and perfect, and we've seen fiberglass that are two years old and terrible. Right. So, you know, it is just a possibility. Um, And it depends on what you want to do. If you want to reskin it yourself and you don't know how to do fiberglass, you might do better with aluminum. I don't like that term. Even with- Reskin? Stop. Even with YouTube? (laughs) You can learn how to fiberglass with YouTube. Oh, the chemicals. Chemicals. With fiberglass. It's just- not my thing, which is why one of the great ways to build trailers, which is the molded fiberglass, like a Casita, right. an Oliver, Oliver right. Bigfoot, a Bigfoot, all of those trailers. Right. It is a phenomenal way to build a trailer. Are they as rigid? I think they are, but I don't know. Are they as rigid? They yes. don't have framing the same way. They don't have traditional framing in the walls. No, they don't, which is why they're so... Uh, impervious to swelling or delaming or problems. I mean, you're looking at basically a big, heavy boat hole right, right there all around you. So they're very well insulating. Um, they're, they're just a solid way to build. Yeah. And they're not that heavy. Now, I haven't been in many of these and I haven't looked that close. Um, you have, like you said, this kind of boat hole kind of build from mm-hmm. bottom top kind of clicked together like a Easter egg, plastic right? Easter egg. Right, right. Um, how do they do the cabinetry and all that on this side? They just kind of build this up on the inside and then click the top on top of it. Like, are the cabinets attached to the walls? No, they do the outside and then they build the cabinets on the inside, just like but are, everything but else. Are they attached or are they kind of freestanding on the inside? Oh, they're attached. How? They're attached. How are they doing this? Is that is it an epoxy? Are they screwing into the uh, fiberglass? I, I would say they're anchors. probably screwing into it to some degree, and there may be some anchors built into it when they do the mold. Okay. So then they can attach to those. And then you can just kind of bolt mm-hmm. bolt it from the top down. Mm-hmm. And then other than being bolted down to the floor, there's a little bit more freestanding, freestanding nature to it, is what and I'm they, guessing. And they tend to build in things that are part of it. Like in the mold, they will have oh, pieces that fit yeah. in there that are like a fiberglass base to the dinette. I kind of remember instead seeing of a in wood some base. of them that they'll have like fiberglass molded shelving. You just attach the doors to it. Correct. Like the, the, the shelf, mm-hmm. the cabinet is already there. Yeah, exactly. You screw a door to it. And there you go. Exactly. Hmm. I am super excited to see the barefoot. I hope it finally comes out what is that the, this summer. They call it's it been the Borealis? three years. Is that what they call it? No. no, that's Northern Lights trailer. Oh, I'm s- and sorry, Bigfoot, got, got confused. Yeah, that's the Northern Light trailer that isn't out yet. And they put that on hold because of the pandemic. They right. just couldn't keep up and get the part. Sure. So, okay. But I think we'll see that in the next few years. I hope so, because what I have seen of that trailer sounds fabulous. Yeah. But, Borealis yeah. by Northern Light. It's perfect, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it means the same thing. I know. It, you see, re- reiteration is how things stick in people's minds. That's silly. 
Well, I mean, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Do we go back to in-text naming? No, no. We, we leave With them With a soul al- dawn? It's been years. We leave them alone now. Oh, Do we? Ah, enough people bought the hook. Enough people are sold on it that they bought them, okay? Uh, did y'all catch that? Soul dawn? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, cool. I have actually enjoyed this because I was using the terms extremely loosely. On, right. on these different build types and, and I benefit from the clarification. Good. So cool. So well, this is all, all for me because Lindsay <laughs> didn't actually want to know. <laughs> well, they're all buzzwords to try to sell something or, uh, you know, make a product look really inviting. The truth is all these trailers have goods and bads benefits. Yeah. Fiberglass is heavier. You know, fiberglass is more insulating. It's a little stronger, mm-hmm. but Stick and Tin has a great place in the market. Right. Um, very good. Very good. Quick, Lindsay, would you own a Stick and Tin? Sure. Okay, quick, PJ, would you own a Stick and Tin? Absolutely. Cl- quick, Clint, would you? Absolutely. If mm-hmm. I had a Stick and Tin, though, it would probably be a, a vintage style yeah. look. Yeah, I mean, I they would kind look of for lend something themselves like that. To that. Yeah. We carry the retros. I know there's a few others out there that have been built over the years. And I would want something kind of vintages because that's what it looks like to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to have like wings on the back and big round lights that stick out. Okay. And, I, like what know. I would imagine when the old uh, Chevys or Thunderbirds or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Or Shastas or. Well, Something I was thinking like cars, that. but okay. <laughs> I know you were. I was trying to relate it. I mean, that's really what the Shasta was. It was a Chevy knockoff kind okay. of thing. Hmm. So, yeah, that's what I would love. Okay. I would love to but have that. But would you like the modern amenities on the inside? You know, I would. It, this is would gonna, you go? This is going to sound How terrible. far vintage would you go? I would go totally vintage as long as it didn't smell. I have yet to be uh, in a true vintage trailer. That doesn't have that, that moth didn't ball smell. kind of. Yeah. I just don't think I could they do have the that smell. smell and you can't. Sorry. You just can't Ooh, get out. that smell. You can't do anything about it. Yeah, I'm all about the smell. I, I would take the visual. Like Febreze the thing. And no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Well, you know, Shasta rebuilt. You could You could cook fish and broccoli in it. Um, it's pronounced <laughs> Shasta. Shasta. Shasta built their originals, but wow, there was only so many of them. Oh man! So that's what I would love, Lindsay. Would you? You said you would go for a stick and tin, but would it have to have modern features and amenities? No. Do no. I get to keep my trailer now? Okay, I have, well, I mean, can I have both? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. No, we I, I don't know. A, a tent would be cool too. Uh, I've been planning a, a another another tent camp out for my kids. I know I have a trailer. I'd paint it yellow. But they need to have a tent camp. A out. tent? No, a vintage oh. trailer. I'd paint it yellow. It'd be like a pineapple. That's dangerous. I'd be like SpongeBob. Okay. Would it have the lightning bolt down the side? Lightning pineapple. Well, no. That's what the old vintage yellow trailers look like. Oh, but are they pineapples? Uh, you know, I don't think anybody <laughs> thought of them as pineapples. I'm pretty sure, but maybe. Uh, I don't know. I'd have a stick and tin. Whatevs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I think I like the look of vintage stuff, but I like the cool of modern stuff. So if I were st- doing stick and tin, it probably would have something a little bit throwback about the look. No, you would. Get, yeah, uh, you would get like a retro stick and tin, and then you would just load it full of gadgetry, lithium yeah. batteries, and that's <laughs> what's happening to my <laughs> trailer right now. <laughs> All the industrial looking like, vintage. Here's my yeah. vintage camper. It can fly. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> now there's a thought. <laughs> well, I said mine would have wings, so you know I could loan them to you. <laughs> mine would be called Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so many different options your trailer out there has none of the things we've talked about no, no. it has an 040 aluminum skin on the outside i like it too i know I and it has canvas whenever i flip the beds out so it's it's kind of this weird amalgamation of awesome yeah isn't it cool that there's so many different kinds of trailers out there now? different kinds of trailers so different many ways different to options camp. yeah yeah so. very fun 
Cool. Very fun. So everybody just pick one and get out there. Mm-hmm. That's that is our speech. Just pick one. Pick whatever one you want. You can even pick a tent. I love it. Lindsay, we haven't let you talk nearly enough, so I'm going to let you take us out of this one. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't be the star of every podcast, Clint. Sometimes I, I just have to let you guys take the reins. I, I appreciate um, that. And practice a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So how do we do? You, you know, you're doing really good. Oh, it was look. informative. It was entertaining. and It's the end of the school year. Your kids graduated and leveled up today mine graduated leveled up so maybe this is the time to get our score did i did we pass do we level up yeah you passed you got like a a c but that's passing that's my whole history <laughs> <laughs> i'm fine with it pj you got a a minus oh way to soak up your what, mom I, yeah i know Jesus. did i talk too much that's my job <laughs> uh too technical if you want to check out more episodes of the RV Small Talk podcast, go ahead and head over to rvsmalltalk.com. You can listen to all the episodes and learn all the things about all the different types of RVs. You can also check us out on Facebook at RV Small Talk or the community page, RV Small Talk Community, to join in on the fun. Don't forget our rallies, the Texas Tiny Trailer Rally and the Texas Truck Camper Rally. Look those up. They are fantastic people. And you can sign up for the next one. Get the details, y'all. Come join us. We camp at them. So you come camp with us. Yes? C. No. (laughs) Yes, no. Uh, C. It's what I earned today. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) everybody that is it that's a wrap for this episode of the rv small talk podcast we will catch you later bye-bye